Well, 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 we are back for another episode of The Productivity Show, the number one podcast on iTunes when it comes to time management and productivity. And today with me, I was supposed to have a special lady. Her name is Marmel. Some of you might know her, but today I guess I have to settle for my original co-host, Brooks Duncan. How are you today, buddy? I know. What a downgrade. Uh, as for how I am, uh, when I woke up, I was fine. Uh, however, I read an article this morning that says my exact age down to like the 0.2 of a year is the lowest level of happiness in your entire life. So I'm at peak misery right now. So when I woke up, I was feeling fine. But after reading that, uh, I'm feeling kind of depressed. So I, I, need, I, need, this, uh, I need this episode to get me, uh, get me re-energized after that. I hope I can contribute to some to some degree and to help you uh, become a little happier because as I always like to say, happy people are productive people. So the more happiness we have, the better we are, the better off we are. So um, for those who don't know, I'm Tam Pham, founder and CEO of Asian Efficiency, where we help people become more productive at work and in life. And my co-host Brooks Duncan here is the COO of Asian Efficiency. And today we're going to be talking about five rituals to help you get more energy in your life. But before we start dive into the content, uh, one of the things we always like to do on the productivity show is share some of our favorite productivity resources as of lately. So uh, Brooks, I know you have three of them here. Do you want to share them in 90 seconds or less? All right. So number one resource is the save to pocket browser extension. Uh, I personally use Instapaper, which is a similar sort of service, but either way it works. Uh, if you have things that you come across that you want to read later, like I, maybe I should have read that article a bit later, not first thing in the morning, <laughs> as Phil says in the chat, uh, what you can do is you can install a little browser extension uh, in Chrome or Firefox, or in some cases, Safari, you just click it and it saves it for you to read later. Uh, so that is number one, the save to pocket or save to Instagram browser extension. Number two is a wearable wellness device called the Apollo Neuro that uh, I don't have them personally used, but a lot of I've heard good things about. And it basically what it is, it's a wellness device for stress management. So what it does is it uses little gentle vibrations to help the body de-stress naturally. So if you're somebody who you're, feels your stress level is a little higher than ideal, uh, maybe check out that Apollo Neuro. And number three is an oldie but a goodie. It's called Flux, and it's an app for Mac or Windows or Linux, basically your computer. And what it will do is it you can set it to automatically adjust the color and temperature of the of the light on your monitor. Uh, we've been recommending this tool for a lot, so we thought we'd revisit it. And yeah, Mac and to a certain extent Windows has some of that built in, but Flux gives you the most control of making it so that as you're working throughout the day, the color and the temperature of the light coming blasting out of your monitor into your eyeballs is slightly changed. So it makes it a more um, pleasant and less straining uh, environment to work from. So that's Flux. Awesome. Well, we will have links to all of that in the show notes. So don't worry if you miss something, just go to theproductivityshow.com slash 325, or just swipe down if you're listening to us in a podcast app. So today we're going to be talking about rituals to help you increase your energy. And for those of you who are listening, if you're wondering if this is right for you, if you're someone who feels like they're lacking energy in their life and you're not making a lot of progress towards your goals and you feel like you're just not getting a lot of stuff done and you procrastinate a lot, those are oftentimes symptoms of having very little energy. Uh, if you are someone who has difficulty starting a habit or making habits stick, then I think you're going to find this episode really helpful as well because we're going to be talking about some, some of the material around habit formation. And so there's some good reminders there and also some new material for you here as well. And if you're someone who already has a lot of habits and rituals in their life and maybe you lost track of some of them, I think you're going to learn a lot in this episode as well. Uh, before we start, I want to remind people that we recently launched TPS Plus, which is the premium version of our podcast here, The Productivity Show. So you can go to theproductivityshow.com slash plus. And when you upgrade to TPS Plus, you get episodes ad-free, you get them a week earlier, and a bunch of other benefits. So if you subscribe to our annual subscription, you are going to get an exclusive one to week a week t-shirt that is well-received. People really love it. They always rock it, and I love mine as well. And so I want to thank everyone who has already subscribed and is a member. So thank you. If you are interested in checking it out and 
uh, also be part of our Ask Me Anything, where we do private content for people, uh, only for members. And you can ask us all sorts of questions and submit topic ideas. Uh, again, you can go to theproductivityshow.com slash plus. All right, Brooks, uh, let's talk about rituals and how we can have more energy in our lives. So uh, why is this topic so important? Well, this topic is very important. Before I dive into that, though, one more note I just want to throw in about TPS Plus. One fun benefit that I, I've heard from members that they're liking is that the show notes that we do for these episodes, uh, you know, we don't make it all up off our mind. We, we tend to plan the content a little bit ahead of time. We have show notes and TPS Plus members get access to those show notes. So, for example, at the start of the at the start of the episode, Tan mentioned that uh, until about two hours ago, uh, Marmel was going to be uh, the ho- one of the hosts of this episode, uh, but I kind of uh, stepped in. Uh, but I kept all Marmel stuff in the show notes as well, so that uh, it's kind of fun. You get to see everybody's content, uh, even if they don't make it onto the show. Uh, but about rituals and energy, it's really, really important because you know, we talk about the T framework a lot, time, energy, and attention. And time gets a lot of love. Attention gets a lot of love when people talk about productivity. But in our opinion, rich uh, energy is kind of like the underpinning of all of it. Like if you don't have energy, no matter how much time, no matter how much attention and, and focus you have, uh, that your important work is not going to get done. And I was having this conversation with my son. My son's a, t- a teenager. He's 15 years old, uh, actually the other day. And because he was saying, oh, I'm so tired. Uh, I need to go to Starbucks and get a mocha. And I said, yeah, you could do that. That will probably help you with your energy at this exact moment. However, maybe you want to think of uh, going to bed a bit earlier so that you don't have, you're not tired every single day. Why don't you take a more systematic approach. And that's what we want to talk about. We're not, we're not going to talk about band-aids today. We're not going to talk about slamming coffee or green tea or, uh, or mochas. We're not even really going to talk about naps. I mean, I know Tan, you're a, a nap fan. I am as well. That will definitely help you. But we're going to talk, what we want to talk about is the, the rituals, the things that you can kind of implement on autopilot and help you every day have better energy versus just quick fixes. Yeah. And in fact, we have five of them here. So let's just start with the first one here. And that is to implement a morning ritual. Now, if you've been following Asian efficiency and the productivity show for a while, you know that we are big fans of our morning ritual, regardless at what time you wake up. I think there's a big myth around morning rituals that it's only for morning people. And we have even thought about renaming this ritual, calling calling it something like a start ritual because it doesn't actually matter what time you wake up, whether it's 5 a.m., 11 a.m., or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The morning ritual is really designed to help you f- to go from I just woke up to feeling really good about myself and about to start work. So it doesn't actually matter what time you wake up. It's really about how you start your day. And I think this is one of the most important rituals that you can have. So think of the morning ritual as a sequence of actions and steps that you take every single day to get yourself ready for a really productive day. And we teach this in our courses a lot. Uh, We have a course called Morning Ritual Starter Kit that will give you our template of building a morning ritual. And if you scroll back to a few episodes uh, on the Productivity Show, you'll find tons of content around morning rituals as well. And so if you don't have a morning ritual right now, I would say make this one of the rituals that you want to implement going forward because it's just so simple to implement, yet it has extremely high leverage because I'm a true believer of the way you start your day sets the tone for the rest of the day. So start it right and you'll have a productive day. But start it poorly and you're going to have an unproductive day. So you have full control of how you start your day. And that's why I think the morning ritual is so important. Yeah, it, and it, this recording this episode is actually good timing because just a few weeks ago, we released this blog post. We called it How the Miracle Morning Can Transform Your Life Before 8 a.m. Uh, and I was really happy. Uh, our our uh, friend and colleague, Steve, uh, wrote it. And I was really uh, interested and thankful when I read it because 
the, the Miracle Morning, which is a book by Hal Elrod, uh, that actually really made a humongous difference for me when I was looking to improve my morning ritual. So I had the Morning Ritual Starter Kit and I also had that book. And the, the framework that both of these things together gives you, uh, however you want to do it, whether you go through the Morning Ritual Starter Kit or you go through the, the savers that, the blog, that our blog post takes you through, which is, stands for silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing, which means journaling, you know, however you want to do it, implementing that kind of framework for me in the morning really, really helped me with my energy throughout the day because it made stuff like uh, some of the things we're going to talk about in a moment, uh, it made it really ritualized. And I was just like automatically going through it every day. I wasn't trying to work stuff in or figure out what to do every morning. It just become part of my ritual. And I, I really did see big energy improvements uh, after implementing that. The thing that really sold me on morning rituals was when someone told me, Tan, you should drink a glass of water, like 500 milliliters every single morning as soon as you wake up. Just do that one thing. And I go, oh, okay. Yeah, that, I mean, that sounds pretty easy. So I start pouring a glass of water ever, ever since. And I, I can't tell you enough how big of a difference that made from just how I felt in the morning, how I started my day, from just pouring a glass of water and, and drinking it. And so ever since then, I said, oh, wow, imagine what else I could do if I added more steps to my morning routine to help me get me ready for the day. And ever since I started adding refining over time, I've kind of created my own morning ritual now, which is about 11 steps or so. But um, even though I've been in this game for like, you know, over a decade, I still look at ways to improve my morning ritual, right? I'm trying different things. And as my life changes, I'm trying to adapt as well in terms of how my morning ritual is, is going to support me. And so, for example, I'm working out a lot more. And so one of the new steps that I have is like I use my Theragun, which is kind of like a percussion machine, which uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's kind of like um, a, um, a machine to help you massage yourself, basically. And so it helps me like get my body going and get loose and um, be good to go. And uh, that's a refinement I've made in the last, I, don't, I want to say six to eight months or so. And so um, I think the bigger takeaway for people here that are listening is when you're really consistent with it, you'll just start to notice how much more energy you have. And it will make you more consistent with your level of focus. You procrastinate a lot less and you'll be a lot more consistent when it comes to just output and what you can get done in any given day. So if you don't have a morning ritual yet, Again, that is the first tip that we would recommend that you implement. All right, let's move on to the second ritual here, and that is to set a time to meditate every single day. Now, if you've been following us for a while, you know I'm not a big woo-woo fan whatsoever. When I first heard about meditation, I thought, okay, this is what hippies do. Like, I'm not one of those. Like, this is not for me. Like, I'm a scientific person, right? Show me science. Show me what actually works in the real world, and I will do it. And it took me actually a few years of just hearing about meditation and just seeing it over and over and over again to go, okay, I've heard this so many times now, there's probably something to it. And once I actually started researching the science behind it, I went, okay, now, now I actually believe it. So if you're in that camp and you're like me, uh, please, you know, pick up a morning ritual and then also add a meditation on top of that, if you can, because it allows you to just be really focused. It allows you to feel really calm. Um, you have less anxiety, it decreases stress. Uh, we have a blog post on our website, uh, which is our kind of like our AE guide to meditation for less stress and more productivity and a happier life. And we'll make sure to link that in the show notes. And uh, I don't know about you, Brooks, but how did you actually get started with meditation? I've been thinking about this because like you, I was always a meditation skeptic. Uh, and I know uh, quite a while ago in episode 210, so TPS 210, uh, the productivity show.com forward slash 210, uh, we have this very popular podcast episode called Meditation for the Rest of Us. <laughs> and the reason we call it that is, is for that exact reason. I, I was never uh, an 
a, uh, I was always a meditation skeptic. I think it was actually, if I'm, if I'm being honest, I think it was actually listening to the productivity show. So before I uh, came on the podcast, I was a listener. Uh, and I think it was actually listening to the productivity show and uh, some of the benefits that people were talking about, you guys were talking about on here uh, that led me to try it out. Uh, so I know uh, I started out using an app called Headspace, and I know that's what Marmel used as well. Uh, I eventually, I switched over to an app called Calm. Uh, I, think, I think the reason why is they were having a big annual sale, uh, and I had heard good things about it. And so, uh, yeah, every day I do the 10 minute daily calm. There's a ton of different uh, meditations in there, or you could just, even if you don't want to subscribe, I think, I don't know if this is still true, but at the time you could still do timed meditations, even if you don't want to subscribe. Uh, I do subscribe. So I do the daily calm every single day. Uh, and yeah, it was listening to the productivity show that got me into it. And like I said earlier, I worked it into my morning ritual. The, these tips that we're going to be give you, giving you kind of really do tie together because uh, it's not really enough just to say uh, meditate uh, it's important of course but it's tying it into that morning ritual or daily ritual maybe you want to do it at night however it works for you um, but uh, tying it into that ritual so that it becomes an automatic part of your day and I know for me I do it well, right after exercising and reading and uh, usually works out right. It's pretty quickly before we do our morning huddle here at Asian Efficiency. Uh, and I know like I, uh, I open my eyes when it's done, I turn on the light and I walk over to my computer and I just have this like clarity and energy and I'm ready to go with whatever the rest of the day is going to, is going to bring. Um, how about you? How do you, how do you do your meditation? I've experimented a lot in terms of just when to do it um, and then also how long. So for example, I used to do 20 minutes back in the day. And I mean, I think it's beneficial, but I feel like the sweet spot for me is around 10 minutes. If I can do 10 minutes a day, I'm good to go. And I first started doing it as part of my morning ritual. And then I kind of switched over and started to experiment by doing a midday as a break to kind of like recenter myself. And I find that that has been really helpful for me. So now I mostly do it as a midday break. In fact, right before this podcast, um, I actually started meditating for about 10 minutes. I use Calm as well. And I use their daily Calm to kind of like get back on track. And we always record this at 3 p.m. Central. So I was looking at my phone and it said 2.41. I go, oh, I got to do my 10 minute meditation before I hop online and discuss uh, our notes today with Brooks. So I did a quick 10 minute meditation and uh, I feel really good and really calm and good to go. And so if you're someone who hasn't picked up a meditation habit yet, um, it's really easy to pick up as a ritual. So I find that the app calm or headspace makes it a little easier for you to adjust and kind of get get into it rather than saying hey um let me just get started let me just do some breathing exercises and do some more research i think if you just install the app most of the research has been done already for you so all you have to do is just focus on listening to the meditation and just following along so i find that really helpful and i would recommend that for most people as well and so um Actually, we're recording this in front of uh, TPS Plus members in the dojo. And Emily said, she said, I completely agree, Tan. I also thought meditation was a hippie trippy and not for me. I've been meditating in the morning before I go to the office for almost two years. And my days run much smoother now. So those are some of the things that are possible. So if you're a skeptic like me and Brooks, um, maybe we just have to continue to repeat this. But uh, if you've learned from us before and implement stuff from us and found it helpful. I'm pretty sure a meditation habit or ritual will make that big difference as well, like it has done for us. So go pick that up. Again, that is our second ritual that we recommend here, and that is meditation. Number three, I know what you're going to think, and I know we've talked about this before, but do we is, have to, do we have to talk about this? <laughs> yes, we do have to talk about this. <laughs> And that is, no, it's not eating your frog. I know we talk about that a lot. But number three today is to have a regular exercise routine, okay? I, I'm not going to hammer home the benefits of exercise that makes you feel good, like releases endorphins. It's good for your brain. It's good for aging, right? There's all sorts of healthy benefits. Like if you just knew about the benefits of something and that was good enough for you to stick to something, then we would all be, you know, in shape, 
look like we have six packs, be super toned and, you know, be good looking all the time, but we're not right. At least some of us aren't, <laughs> but one thing that I think you really want to consider is this is probably one of the hardest rituals to pick up and also the easiest to give up as well. Um, so I want to say that one more time, making exercise a regular thing is probably the hardest to pick up and the easiest to give up. And so out of all the rituals that we talk about today, this is probably the one that requires like the most energy, the most focus, the most commitment, um, because it does require your body, mind, and soul to kind of like make this part of your life. And so this is where you, it does require a little bit more planning, right? It does require a little bit more strategy. It does require a little bit more of, okay, what works for me? But uh, once you do pick it up, I do think it makes such a big difference for my personal life. And also I'm sh sure for you works as well, who just recently started Orange Theory twice a week. I uh, have to give some claps here for you, Brooks, for, for doing that, because I know that's not easy. Yeah, I think uh, uh, long story short, Orange Theory is, a, is a, a gym that just opened up in my neighborhood. And I actually learned about it from Tan because he, uh, I don't know if you still do, but at one time he went to it in Austin and would do it often when I would be down there visiting. Uh, and so one opened in my neighborhood. So I figure I had no excuse. So I think the first message I sent to you through Slack DM after doing my first class was uh, basically filmed with or filled with uh, skull emojis. <laughs> and I'm not going to say that doing that gave me a lot of energy that day. <laughs> However, by the, the third time, uh, it definitely uh, it definitely had a, a big payoff for me because I find, yeah, it's so true what you say about about how it's the, the hardest to start and the easiest to let go. And I also find that there's kind of two types of people naturally anyway. Uh, there's like natural exerciser. So for example, my wife, um, if she doesn't run or do some sort of exercise for more than like two days in a row, she starts feeling like really gross and stressed out. And she'll, uh, she just starts going like, crawling the walls like she's a natural exerciser she always needs to be doing it uh whereas uh, uh, the other type of people are not so much uh like i definitely am not that much uh, so for me um just relying on willpower isn't going to do it relying on uh, putting it on my calendar isn't going to do it it has to be part of a ritual and that's why it was so helpful putting it into my morning routine is my morning ritual is having that in there having that space there and having it just something that i automatically do every day whether it's at the very least going for a morning walk or going to the gym or uh dying at orange theory you know whatever it is uh what you do isn't as important as the trying to be consistent uh, and doing it on a ritual basis. Because uh, for those of us who are not natural exercisers, uh, it, it's, it's so easy to lose. I'm in that camp as well. I'm not a naturally exerciser myself. I, I definitely, for example, need um, accountability to make that happen. That's why I have a personal trainer to hold me accountable to make sure I show up and actually do the work. And then also uh, the reason I joined Orange Theory is because I, I mean, I hate, and hate is a strong word, but I absolutely hate the treadmill and any sort of cardio exercise. And so this is the only way I can actually run when I see other people running and there's music that I don't have to think about because oftentimes I can be that person that goes, oh man, if I don't have to write music, I can't work out the way I want to. And I come up with all these excuses and then not, never work out. So when I just show up for class and there's music already figured out for me, uh, not that I always agree with it, but <laughs> it's there. And when there's other people running and doing stuff as well, it makes me motivated to, to keep going and not look bad in landmark terms. And so um, I found those classes super helpful. And so um, I always push myself as much as I can to make sure that I'm always like in an orange zone as much as I can. And so um, I, I really like those classes just because I don't have to think. I just have to show up. And showing up is already the hardest part, right? And so for those of you who are listening to this, um, again, like I said, it's the easiest to lose and the hardest to attain in terms of just exercising on a regular basis. So find something that works for you, right? If you particularly enjoy running, then start with that. But if you don't enjoy running, 
you can know about all the benefits, but then maybe try something else that kind of gets you in the exercising habits. And then maybe over time you can then start picking it up and, and do that. So uh, this is a little bit more personalized, I find, in terms of how you make this work for you because there's just so many ways to exercise, right? You can do racquetball, uh, pickleball is like a big thing in Austin here. People love doing that. Um, people love swimming or some people love running. Some people do boxing. There's just so many ways to be exercising. So find the one thing that works for you when it comes to that. And oftentimes, once you get that in place, all the exercises you want to do afterwards or sort of any sort of fitness challenge um, is going to be a lot easier. Yeah, my so, wife's a competitive squash player, and she's already decided that uh, when we retire, wherever we retire, she's going to be the, the pickleball champion for, for the, uh, the retiree group wherever we end up being. <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to Rosie, who is uh, participating live, listening to this with the Dojo and TPS Plus. She says, I've started using both Calm and exercise. Thanks to you guys. Uh, uh, I feel better and not exhausted all the time. And yeah, that's, that's the amazing thing. And it has such a knock on productivity benefit. Just getting the energy part of the T framework sorted just has such huge benefits for everything else you want to do. Yeah. And the tricky thing with exercise is in the short term, you're actually going to feel a little bit more tired but you're building that capacity to have more energy over time, right? So like, just like you said, Brooks, after that first workout class of Orange Theory, you go, oh my God, there's like 10 skull emojis, you know, in Slack. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure now it's maybe two or three and then give it a few more weeks, it'll be like smiling emojis. Yeah, I wouldn't say a little bit more tired at first, but you just have to know, you just have to trust the, trust the process and know that the payoff will be there eventually. <laughs> So that is, again, ritual number three here to have a regular exercise routine. Let's move on to ritual number four here, and that is to have clearing to neutral in your life. This is a habit or ritual that we created and came up with um, many, many years ago. I used to write a blog post about this, when it, and when it first came out, it really struck a chord with a lot of people. And it's the idea that Anytime you finish something, you want to reset everything so it's ready for use next time. So the, the way I discovered this was um, when I was living in Budapest, I remember I wanted to eat lunch. And when I went to my uh, like kitchen area, I wanted to grab a plate. And you know, being a minimalist at the time, I didn't have much stuff. And so I had like literally one plate that I was using all the time. <laughs> and before I could eat or even start preparing my lunch, I had to like wash the dishes. And because I had to wash the dishes, there was just enough friction for me to go, oh my gosh, I have to wash the dishes first before I can start eating. No, 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 this is, this is not good. I, I don't want to do this. Okay. Um, so I left my house to then go somewhere to eat food and then come back. Right. But it's the idea there that there was friction before I could get to do what I really wanted to do. And ideally, you want to eliminate that friction as much as possible. So what I started to do was, okay, anytime I finished eating breakfast or lunch or dinner, I would wash my dishes right away. I wouldn't let it sit there. I would actually wash it right away. There was just no excuse now. And so once I started doing that, anytime like I finished breakfast, I would wash my dishes, you know, dry them, put them away. And then when it was lunchtime, then I would go, okay, it's time to eat. And I would go to my kitchen and then go, oh yeah, everything is ready for me to use now. Right? So the big idea behind clear into neutral is just anytime you finish something, reset it. So it's ready for use next time. So think about your future you to be, to go, oh my gosh, this is all good to go. I'm, I'm so glad, you know, that I made it easy for my future you to get started. Yeah, this is something I would, <laughs> this seems to be a theme this episode, but this is something I was always kind of skeptical about. Like when I, you know, I read the blog post back in the day, uh, but to me, it seemed logical that and more productive to leave things exactly where they were. This is not when it comes to dishes, but more to do with work, but to leave things like exactly how I had them. And my theory was uh, I, I would be ready to pick up. So let's say I was writing a, uh, working on a big blog post or an article or something like that. I'd like have my text editor up. I'd have the different folders up, uh, or maybe I would, uh, you know, have apps and tabs open, uh, like 
leave it on my computer how I was have it and then shut down for the day. Um, and to me, that just seemed more logical to be able to pick it up. But what I found actually is uh, by trying it out, it's actually not the best way to do it. It is actually better to start from a clear space when you get going in the morning or after a, whatever your work session is. Uh, because sometimes what you what you're working on at the end of the day isn't necessarily what you should be focusing on at the beginning of the day. So that's number one. Uh, and by leaving things up, you're kind of predetermining what you're going to be working on, even if it's not the best thing, or you need to then clear stuff away. And number two, there's just something about that mental reset and coming into it and getting your tools, whatever those tools happen to be, uh, and getting working versus having everything starting the day or starting the workstation all scattered. Uh, it just creates that like mental, mental clutter right from the get go. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a CTN convert, uh, just like I'm a meditation convert. I'm a clear to neutral convert too. And there's many ways you can implement this. And I think the big idea here is relating it back to energy is when you have stress or friction, it just drains you of energy. And that's what we're trying to avoid here. And that's where clearing to neutral is so powerful because it avoids having any sort of friction first and foremost, but also if you find a draining to get started or you just like don't look forward to it whatsoever, it just drains you of energy to go, Oh man, I should really do this, but I don't feel like it. And all these excuses come up. And then procrastination is oftentimes one of the symptoms of not having energy to do the things you want to do. Because everything you do requires a certain level of like, you know, if you think back to your chemistry class, right? It requires a certain level of activation energy to get started. And we want to make sure that, that activation energy is as low as possible. So we make it really easy for ourselves to get started. And that's why clearing to neutral is so powerful. So uh, ways you can implement this. And we have a blog post about this. We'll make sure to link to it in the show notes as well. But just to give you some examples, um, clear your desk. Anytime you start working on something and then finish off your work, clear your desk right away, especially at the end of the day when you're leaving the office or you're done with work so that tomorrow when you show up, you're ready to go. There's no papers laying around, right? Uh, it's just clear. There's no notes there. It's just clear and good to go. Uh, another example is anytime I finish writing, I close my apps altogether. So there's no browser open. Uh, I actually created a keyboard maestro, in fact. Uh, this is something you'll appreciate, Brooks. I created a keyboard maestro so that anytime my computer goes to sleep, it will close Chrome. And so that way, uh, I know that by the time I'm done and I put my computer to sleep, everything is just closed and I have like a, a clear screen and I'm good to go. Uh, another example is uh, I set my clothes for the next day. So knowing that, okay, um, as soon as I go to bed, right, I want to make sure I'm ready and get to go for the next day, kind of helps me beat decision fatigue a little bit, right, which is an episode we've talked a lot about in the previous episode. If you scroll back a few episodes, you'll see that uh, topic where we discuss about decision fatigue and how you want to eliminate that as much as possible. So setting clothes for the next day is one of the other examples. And again, we'll have lots more in the blog post. We'll make sure to link to it in the show notes. That's so funny. I have something similar with Keyboard Maestro. Uh, I don't have it close Chrome, but I do have it quit Slack and email uh, and any of those type of distraction type things. I should do it for Chrome, actually. That's a great idea. But yeah, or no, it minimizes Chrome. It doesn't close it, but it minimizes it. But Slack and email, uh, it closes as well. So I'm guaranteed if my computer goes to sleep that uh, everything's like fresh and good to go once it, once it starts up. So... That is number four here, the clearing to neutral ritual. All right, let's move to the fifth and final one here, and that is to master your evening ritual. So the evening ritual is kind of like the opposite of a morning ritual. So the morning ritual helps you get started, whereas the evening ritual helps you wind down at the end of the day. So think of it as like the things you do before you go to bed to ensure that you have a great night of sleep. And so I usually do this about an hour before I go to bed or so, depending what time I go to bed. Usually I try to be in bed by like 10, 30, 11 at the latest. And so I usually start my evening ritual anywhere around nine o'clock or so. And I have like a sequence of things that I do to make sure I'm relaxed, that I'm uh, calm, that I've journaled, that I have my mind clear. Because one of the worst 
feelings in the world is when you go to bed feeling stressed, right? If you've ever laid in your bed with your laptop open and you're checking email before you go to bed, you're like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe there's so many emails. I have to do X, Y, and Z. I have to do this tomorrow. Like when you go to bed feeling stressed out like that, it's just, you're going to have poor sleep. You're going to feel terrible the next day. That's not how you want to go to bed, right? So that's where an evening ritual kind of helps you power down and kind of like settle in so that you get, you basically signal to your body to have a great night of sleep. This is something that I've, uh, I'm definitely a case in point for this because this is something I've never needed before. Uh, I've always been, uh, I think I've even talked about on the podcast before. I've always been a super sleeper. Like as soon as my head hits the pillow, I'm out. And there's all the usual uh, advice uh, that we've talked about on the podcast before about how, you know, you shouldn't have screen time before sleeping, like all that type of stuff, which I totally agree have always agreed is great advice. However, I, I've never needed it. You know, I could be doom scrolling Twitter. I could be looking at Instagram. I could be watching a, a TV show or Netflix show or something like that. Uh, and then just like turn off the light and go to sleep right away. Uh, however, for whatever reason, maybe about six months ago or something like that, that started to go away where I've had, I've have had uh, trouble sleeping and I've had to start uh, doing a lot of these uh, evening ritual steps, like trying to reduce the temperature in the room, trying to make sure things are extra dark, uh, trying to uh, stay away from, uh, you know, some of the things that are more engaging, not having caffeine, like all of those evening ritual things. Uh, I'm, and I'm at the point now where I'm, I'm thinking maybe I should start, even though I said in the podcast that I don't do this, but I've started to think maybe I should do some journaling at night uh, and even maybe do the, uh, uh, do the unthinkable and cut out screen time late, uh, late in the evening uh, just to, to implement that stuff. So it just goes to show you that uh, for those of you who, who don't need to do this stuff, uh, that's, uh, that's a great place to be in. Uh, however, however, if you, that can change. Uh, and this, uh, the concept of an evening ritual really does help you uh, get better sleep and then which will have knock-on effects for energy the next day. Yeah, so there's many things you can do and we have a blog post on evening rituals. So if you're brand new to this concept, I would highly recommend highly recommend that you check out the blog post that we have. We'll link to it in the show notes. And again, you can find everything that we talked about today in the show notes by going to theproductivityshow.com slash three, two, five. But just to give you some examples of things that I personally do is uh, I try to eliminate screen time as much as possible. So that's one thing. Uh, so as soon as like nine, nine thirty hits, uh, I try to like close work, make sure I'm not looking at my TV, not looking at my laptop or any tablet or phone. Um, the phone is definitely the hardest part, but uh, everything also try to close out. Uh, another thing is like I lowered the temperature. So studies have shown that you sleep better and you have better quality sleep when the room temperature is pretty cold. In fact, if it's around 18 Celsius, which I believe is around 64, 63 Fahrenheit. Um, so the, the colder, the better, and your partner might not like it, but, uh, if you want to have great sleep, then the colder, the better. So that's uh, one thing. The other thing that I always like to do is, um, some sort of stretching routine. So, uh, getting your body fully relaxed. Um, I used to use a foam roller a lot, and I'm a big fan of that. If you have one at home, if you don't have one, definitely pick one up to kind of like stretch anything that's really tight in your body. But uh, since I have the Theragun, which is kind of like the, the fancy machine to kind of like massage yourself, I, I've been using that and I haven't been using my foam roller as much. So as you know, Brooks, I'm, I'm a super lazy person. So anything I can do to make it even easier and make myself even lazier, the better. So I'm a big fan of the Theragun. All right. So that is, again, tip number five. And that is to master your evening ritual. So. Before we close out, one of the things we always like to uh, leave you with is one simple action step that you can take because everything we do at Asian Efficiency, we want to make sure that it's simple and actionable, right? We don't uh, like to talk about philosophical things as much. We want to make sure that you actually get results and implement stuff. So for today's episode, if you made it this far, what we re recommend that you do next is to just pick one ritual that we talked about today, right? So whether it's an evening ritual, clearing to neutral, exercising on a regular basis, meditation, or starting with a morning ritual, 
pick one of the five. Don't try to do all of them. Just pick one of them and then focus on doing that for the next seven days. And we'll have links to all of the resources we talked about today in the show notes. So if you want to check it out, just go to theproductivityshow.com slash three, two, five.